Hi guys, so this is kind of a silly little um, quick video. My lighting is kind of dark, it's been raining, but I just want to show you guys. I'm going to be using this uh, concha cutter from um, Amazon. It was $15 and I thought it was going to be metal, but it's like plastic. So real quick, I just want to show you I was making some conchas because I've been trying my hand at them. I'm just going to dip it in a little bit of um, flour and just give it a little... Woo. So I made a very small indentation and we'll see how it works out at the end. I also have this other one here. I'm going to do the same thing with it. This one is from also from Amazon, but you can buy it, find it on eBay, but it makes like a cute flower. So I'm going to let these rise after I do this, after I, you know, imprint this on a few of them and then uh, bake them and we'll see what they end up looking like. I just want to show you guys that with this one here, it's kind of beveled, they both are, but my daughter wants me to help her out with something. Um, when I lay in here, I'm pushing it down not too hard, and then I'm going to swirl it around. Hopefully you can kind of see that, so I can get that indentation, that, that flower all over. Otherwise, it's just not flat enough, you know what I'm saying? Um, the bread has its own roundness. This has roundness. You think that would work out, but it kind of doesn't, because I don't want to push it all the way through. You're not really supposed to cut into the the dough. But anyway, I'm gonna let these rise and once it starts cracking, like you see that it's pulling away, that's how you know your conchas or whatever it is that you're baking, well I guess conchas in this case, are ready and then you bake them and this pretty little uh, symbol will be in there. Okay, so <laughs> these are so funny. I'm gonna tell you why these were doomed from the beginning. Um, I noticed early on when I went to put my yeast into my warm milk, my milk was scalding hot and I didn't realize that. I threw the yeast in and I still used it and of course I probably killed the yeast because these usually puff up a little more. But I do want to show you how cute the little shell shape is. I mean, they're okay. I don't know. And then I use leftover topping, the masa. They call it masa. It's like a sugar Crisco flour mix, which is kind of interesting, but that's so yummy. And if you touch it right now, like, it'll stick to your finger. I don't know. See? But then after a while, it stays, it gets nice and just kind of hardens and makes your nice concha um, topping. Um, and then these guys look really bad. So what happened is... I used leftover topping, I put it in the fridge, and I didn't. I kind of put it out room temperature, but it was still kind of cold, so when I went and put it on here, it just wasn't being okay. But actually, when I lift these off, this will just stay on the mat, so it's not going to be too bad. I'll have some pictures for you guys, obviously, off the mat. They'll look prettier. But, um, well, let me see if I can show you the fun I made the other day. And I did this by hand, so that's kind of why I went ahead and ordered the, um, the cutters. Oh my gosh, the kids are... Hold on. Sorry, I normally don't make videos just like this. <laughs> but this one, I, I made these the other day and see they're very nice and cute. And um, I'll have the link to uh, Pastelaria. Pues Pastelas la More Moreliana, I think is what she goes by. Ana la Moreliana. Anyway, so these I made the other day. Oh, that's white from a different uh, concha. And they're real cute and they're really good. So that's why I went and tried it today. So they came out a little different. I did do that design with a knife. You don't have to have the cutter. Or like I did, this one's more diagonal. These are something else in the semitas. But anyway, all right, guys, I'll see you at the next one. Okay, Bye guys, now. This video is going to be totally insane because I just made another batch because I cannot stand making something that didn't work out. So this is the next morning, and I was like, you know, I'll make some. And this is nice and puffy. I can see already. It looks awesome. So I'm going to let that sit for a little bit longer. But I also want to show you in the meantime that I got delivered the little guys I ordered. So this is to, um, so this company is called breadstamps.com, and they actually have a baking code here. I got this from eBay and I got the other ones from Amazon even though they're the same company. So it says if you go to their website breadstamps.com 10% off baking love and I did not get 10% off because I didn't get this coupon until now. So I'm sure if I keep making bread I'll probably order more but they are 3D printed and I'm sorry that I'm like oh I'm done but you know I'm not done because I want to show you some good ones. So um, these are for Monte Conchas or um, did I show you guys those? I think I showed you when I showed you my bread that I had made before. It's basically a concha, but you put it inside a muffin tin so it puffs up. And a mantecada, I'll show you that real quick. <laughs> I have my pans ready to go. Mantecadas are like these. I only have fun bimbo ones or, uh, because I love these things. Oh my gosh, they're so greasy and so fattening. But see, it's like a little muffin. But it's really not a mantecada because um, this has its own recipe. It's totally different from concha bread. But it's just a concha in the shape of a mantecada. So they call them manteconchas. But you need a little mini stamper on top. So I got these and these are really tiny. I saw the size, you know what it said, but they're so cute. And I guess you can make mini conchas with these too. So that's kind of cool. And then I got this little flower one. So what I'll probably do is try out the flower one. I might make some mini conchas. I just, 
I'm not the best. I mean, I've only made like two or three batches of um, pan dulce ponchas, and I don't want to mess up the recipe if I, I I'm not sure. The Lay's recipe that I use, Pasteles La Morelliana, she has, you know, you bake it at 425, which is pretty high, between 400 and 425. So this being so small, I feel like maybe I should bake it at 375, but I don't want to mess it up. So I might throw in a couple just to try it out and see how cute they are. And then I wanted to show you guys that my daughter, the other day when I made the bun, she was dying for me to make something blue. She kept talking about blue and blue, and I'm like, okay, so I thought she forgot, and today she's still talking about blue, so I dyed some of the topping blue, so which is weird. And then I thought, why am I negating my little daughter? Because I'm like, no, I even thought about it when I woke up. I was like, I don't want to make blue ones. That's weird. Well, it's not really weird. It's just, um, you know, we're used to yellow ones, uh, pink ones from the bakery, the chocolate ones, the regular white one. It's all the same. This is the only one that's flavored because so you have to put cocoa powder in it. But this one, I just was like, you know what? She wants blue ones. I'm going to make blue ones. That's the point of making them at home, right? You can do what you want. So I made her blue ones. This stuff is so soft. Ugh. You know what? Maybe I shouldn't keep it in there. Um, this is literally all it is is um, powdered sugar, flour, and Crisco, a third of each, same amounts of each, and then you can color the portions as you like or whatever. Um, so it's getting too soft because that Crisco, eesh. it's kind of hard to work with because of that. But anyway, so I'll probably cut to me using maybe the, the cutters um, in the video. I didn't really show you that. I just talked about it. And why not make this video longer and just kind of a mishmash of a few different days that I worked, okay? I'll be right back. So I'm just going to grab a little of this stuff. It's not that easy to work with. You really have to kind of like add in some flour as you're going because it's kind of a pain. But anyway, uh, I'm just going to kind of add a little flour to this surface. I'm just using a tortilla maker. You can just squeeze this in your hands, but this makes it a little bit easier. And I'm just adding quite a bit of flour because it's very sticky today. Flattening it out. And you can go right to your bread with this, but I like to, I just put it in my hand first. And then I slap this right on top of my bread. Now you can see it's already wanting to stick, which is such a pain. But again, I'm not a professional. I've only done this a few times. Oh, there goes that piece. I might have to come back and get that. And then I would take this over. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to do this by hand. And put it on my bread and squeeze it down. Okay, and I'm going to do that for all of them. And now we have some of the little guys made. Okay, so I'll show you some of the mini ones. So what I have over to the side is just like some flour, and I'm just going to kind of dip these little guys. And these are supposedly mini conchas that I made here. And you just kind of push it in. You don't really want to cut into the bread, but you're just pushing this little guy in, you know. And it'll start spreading and make that cute design. And then I have the little swirl one, so I'll do the same thing. And then I'll do the same thing for the big guys, but using, you know. So we made kind of a swirl. That one got a little bit sticky, but I can redo that. Just push it back down. And Miranda Lou. And I'll do the same thing for these other guys. Just take this big one and push it right into the center here. And this one I did kind of roll a little bit so you can get more of the design because it's just kind of shaped weird. But um, I'll do the same. Again, for the new one that we just got, the little flower. And roll it as best I can, okay? And I'm gonna let them rise and bake. I just wanted to show you real quick that they're starting to crack, as you can see like that white space you see in there. And that's how you know that they are rising and they're pretty much ready. So I'm getting my uh, oven heated up because it takes forever. And I do recycle or reuse my parchment, it's not a big deal, but hopefully you can kind of see a little bit of that cracking. It's opening up. So they're rising and they're super cute. And um, I'll get them in the oven to bake and we'll see them on the other side. Okay guys, so like I said, I'm still trying to get a hang of it, but I might have over baked these just cause I don't want them to not be baked in the middle. So I'd rather go a little bit longer than not. But also um, I used unbleached flour. So this probably could be whiter if I was using bleached flour, but how cute, they're all baked, ready to go. The blue, these were on top at the beginning. So they got a little discolored there. Um, ready to go. So I just want to show you the bottom of the, basically that's how I check it. Just check the bottom and it's nice and brown or a little bit darker even and you're good to go. So, um, thanks for watching guys. <laughs> My crazy little video. These guys, same thing. I did go ahead and bake them at four and a quarter, but they probably could have gone a little bit lower because I just did them all together. But, um, look how cool the stamps worked. So cute. Just different shapes. Obviously the shell is your classic concha, but the rest of them 
are there and all these guys are made with those little mini stamps. So thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next one. Bye now. Were you singing a song? Yep. What were you singing? Utopia. Oh yeah. Can you sing it again? Utopia. <laughs> Yeah, you like working with that masa? Yeah. <laughs> so messy, huh? I can't like this like this I wanted, but I make this flat. Mm -hmm. I make this flat yeah. and put flower. Yeah. Yeah.